is Jeff Short, Pastor Jeff Short, and I'm coming at you today. It's a day after the historic Supreme Court decision that permits now gay marriage to take place in all 50 states. I should actually make that stronger. It mandates that gay marriages must take place in all 50 states, that no state or territory of the United States can deny same-sex marriage. And I am violently against that ruling, and I'd like to go over the Supreme Court decision, the majority opinion. I did read the dissenting opinions of the four justices who disagreed with the majority, and they're great, they're excellent, and they're not very long to read, so I would encourage you to read those. But I'd like to just go through the majority opinion, five of the justices, three women, two men, decided for the entire nation and now impose gay marriage on all 50 states, whether the states want that or not, whether the states voted for or against it, it is now the law of the land. I'd like to go through this Supreme Court decision and explain to you some of the key aspects of this decision and and show you how flawed it is. Uh, The general impression I get from the majority opinion written by Anthony Kennedy, it is the most touchy-feely, sentimental, feeling, emotional-based decision I have ever seen a Supreme Court hand down. I have never seen the kind of psychological emotionalism written into a decision as I have in this decision. If you read through this thing, you are going to see phrases and you're going to see sentences that just are mind-boggling in how fuzzy they are, how ambiguous they are. Uh, Gobbledygook is a good word that describes a lot of what is written. A lot of sob stories, a lot of emotional, tear-jerking stories about people supposedly who are injured or hurt because of the traditional understanding of marriage, the definition of a man and a woman, supposedly people who want to challenge that standard definition are hurt and damaged and injured in such a catastrophic way that the law needs to be changed and and the marriage definition needs to be changed into something else. And so um, you see this decision is just full of the emotional kind of language that you might hear, say, in a junior high girls gossip session, except now this is supposed to be Supreme Court justices, the highest authority in our land, handing down an authoritative decision, and yet we get this kind of girlish, gossipy kind of touchy-feely language about making a decision of this monumental import. So this is what my uh, initial impression of the Supreme Court ruling is. And then when you go through it, it talks about uh, marriage in general, and it really builds up the whole concept of marriage, which is great, um, until you get to the part where they say, and we want to change it, and we want to make it into something different. That's the problem. So uh, let me just go through some of the different aspects of this decision uh, and talk to you in terms of what it really is. What we're seeing with this decision is what is called sociological law. It's arbitrary law. We saw this in the Soviet Union under communism for the many decades that uh, Soviet communism ruled in Russia and the countries around Russia. And what sociological law is, it's law based on what an elite group in government decides the country needs or the territory needs or society needs at the given time. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with past precedent. It doesn't have anything to do with any kind of divine or universal absolute principles. It simply ask the question, what do we think society needs at this very moment to keep order and to keep society unified and moving forward? And whatever that 
solution we determine is is what we pass into law. And that's what we see happening with the Supreme Court uh, in yesterday's decision. We see sociological law. The justices got together amongst themselves, the majority, and decided what they thought society needed at this moment in time in the 21st century, and then they went to the Constitution and they rationalized the words that they found in the Constitution to fit the answer they had already determined. This is what is taking place in the majority decision. Anthony Kennedy does not find justification in the Constitution for granting same-sex marriage as a constitutional right. He does not find it there. There is no evidence there. There is no proof. He did not prove that the Constitution requires that same-sex marriage be recognized or that the standard male-female definition of marriage be changed. He does not find that in the Constitution. What he does is does some, in terms of accounting, he does some creative bookkeeping. It's like we saw in some of the big uh, scandals like Enron and some of these big corporations. Uh, they could be going broke every day, but they had creative bookkeepers and accountants who could make the figures appear on paper profitable. And so on the one hand, through creative bookkeeping and rationalizing of the data, the accountants could show up, up, upwards profits while the company is actually going down, down, down into bankruptcy. Well, that's what uh, Justice Kennedy and the majority have done with the Constitution. They have taken a lot of different words and sentences and phrases, and they've used creative accounting and creative writing, and they've taken the basic raw material of the Constitution, and they've cooked up a new right, the right to same-sex marriage, and now have imposed it on all 50 states. And so it's a very ingenious thing they've done, but there is no constitutional justification for it. And so what I want to do is go through here and just explain what they have done and so that you can understand what they've done. Uh, they start out by talking about how the standard definition of marriage has been basically assumed and uh, presumed to be what marriage is all about. And then they talk about how marriage has changed over the years. Uh, and they say, see, now marriage has changed over the years, and so we shouldn't be worried about changing marriage even further because we've already established that we can change it. Uh, we've seen uh, different Supreme Court uh, decisions that have modified the definition of marriage. The problem with that line of reasoning is no Supreme Court decision has ever modified the essential components of marriage, which is a man and a woman. No society anywhere ever has uh, change the essential definition of marriage as a man and a woman. Not any of the Greeks, not anywhere that we know of, anywhere in the civilized world or uncivilized world in the last, uh, in all of recorded history until the modern era of about, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, some uh, laws were changed and now they include same sex marriage. But this is a total rewrite and a revision of the definition of marriage, and there's no way around it. You can't say, oh, it's just something that has evolved. This is not an evolve. This is a reinvention, and so we need to say that uh, very clearly. Well, I'm going to get further into this case in just a minute. Don't go away. We'll be back for another segment of Christian Answers. Welcome to Christian Answers for today. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and I'm explaining the Supreme Court decision uh, mandating or imposing gay marriage on all 50 states. Um, one of the most curious phrases in the whole Constitution, I mean, the whole decision, appears at the very beginning, the very beginning sentence where Justice Kennedy writes, the Constitution promises liberty to all within its reach, a liberty that includes certain specific rights that allow persons within the, a lawful realm to define and express their identity now, that is a strange, strange sentence that says basically that uh, the Constitution grants a person the liberty to define 
his or her identity. What does this have to do with anything? Their identity. I think we're beginning to see the groundwork for another whole issue, and we won't even get into this today, but I've talked about this before in past episodes, about this whole movement to try to give people the right to self-identify as whatever they want. Um, Bruce Jenner has, being a man, he has recently expressed his self-identity as a woman. He is, a, he is self-identifying as a woman. We recently saw a white woman born a white child, raised as a white girl, now expresses her self as, and self-identifies as a black woman. So we have this same language by Justice Kennedy of this right to self-identity. So basically a person uh, has the right to identify as to whatever they are, whoever they want to be. Uh, this is strange. This is weird. I mean, you would wonder, what does this have to do with anything? Well, now we're going to see judges, now mark my words, we're going to see judges pointing to that phrase and say, see, a person has the right to identify as male or field, female, depending, not even depending on any biology, not on, depending on any past history, not depending on any factual information at all. They can simply express the desire to identify as a person of any gender, and that is what the law will uphold. And it's probably going to come back to Justice Kennedy's remark here about the right to self-identity. Very strange uh, that we see him using this kind of terminology here. Now, he goes into this decision, first of all, by talking about the importance of marriage. And we would all affirm what he's talking about. He's talking about the long historical uh, record of marriage and how important it is to society and, and, and individuals. And he's assuming, and he also mentions this, this the assumption is that it's, we're talking about male and female. And so he goes into discussing how important uh, marriage is, and everyone would agree, marriage is very, very, very important. And then he makes this leap. He says, the people who want to redefine marriage as to include gay marriage, they also feel that marriage is very important. And that's why they want to be married. And they want marriage to be something within their grasp because they think marriage is so important. Well, that's a true and a false statement. On the one hand, yes, they want the status and the prestige and the, the honor and the recognition of marriage, but they don't, on the other hand, want to meet the requirements of marriage. Marriage is, it was not defined by a government. Marriage was not defined by a philosopher. It was not defined by any human agency. Marriage is something that has come down to us from the past so far back that no one no one person, no one nation, no one group invented marriage. Marriage is, is something that we inherit from our predecessors, and so no government can actually define it. But people today want the privilege of marriage and the status of marriage without meeting the qualifications of marriage. Marriage is a man and a woman. Marriage is defined by the union of a man and a woman. And so when you are not joining two uh, people of the opposite sex together, you are not having or constituting a marriage. And so on the one hand, Justice Kennedy says, well, the people that want gay marriage, they really uphold marriage. Well, they don't uphold marriage. They uphold a redefinition of marriage. They they honor and cherish a new definition, a rewrite, a revision of marriage. They don't uphold the inherited understanding of marriage that we've all received from the ancient past all the way up through to the present. No, they don't honor that definition of marriage. They honor a new definition that they are redefining. And that is the truth, not what Justice Kennedy is saying. It is not the case that the people who want to redefine marriage honor marriage. 
No, they honor a rewrite of marriage, and that's a different kind of a thing. So then Justice Kennedy goes into a series of sob stories telling or trying to prove that the people that are being injured and hurt and um, offended by the present status quo definition of marriage need to be remedied. And so he talks about how uh, one uh, same-sex couple uh, couldn't cross state lines and still have their marriage recognized. And, and then another couple in Michigan, uh, they couldn't adopt um, these children together because the state doesn't recognize uh, gay adoption and all this stuff. And it's a big bunch of sob story about how these people are suffering and they just can't uh, have a life the way they want it and they can't live the way they want, which is all a lie. They can live any way they want. They can form any kind of relationship they want. They have a form these relationships, these aberrant, uh, irregular relationships, they've formed them, they're living in them. They just can't have the status of real marriage because they aren't in a real marriage. And so um, they want to redefine marriage so that they can then have a marriage, quote unquote. And that is what the issue is all about. And Justice Kennedy is trying to show that these people really deserve to be in a marriage and we need to give them the status of marriage because they want it, because they think that they need it, because they would like to have it, because it would make them feel better and that it would be more convenient for them. And my question is, why do we base social policy on what some of these few individuals want that will make them feel better. Isn't it more important that we get it right as far as what is true and what is correct and what is right and not base it on what will make some of these people feel better about themselves and, and feel better about their relationship that they're in? Um, that's the real fundamental question. It looks like Justice Kennedy and the majority are willing to upend society and put society at risk and undermine marriage, real marriage, in order to make these few couples, these small percentage of our population, feel good about themselves. And that seems to me illogical. It seems to be irrational. And we really shouldn't have let that happen, but it's already happened now because of this ruling. So uh, we're going to talk more about some of the more uh, absurd points of this ruling in just a second. Don't go away. Well, welcome back to Christian Answers. We're talking about the Supreme Court's decision yesterday uh, imposing gay marriage on all 50 states. And we're looking at the actual decision uh, and I've read through the entire decision, and I've underlined some things I want to point out. One of the arguments that uh, Kennedy continues to make throughout this is that he wants the, uh, he, he feels that the people who are being denied the right to gay marriage are feeling like they're left out. They don't receive the benefits of full marriage. They don't receive the social status of full marriage, and that makes them feel bad about themselves. It makes them feel sad. Um, and also on the level of benefits, um, it deprives them of some of the social benefits, legal benefits, financial benefits, actually, of the status of marriage. And so he says that's not fair. Well, the answer to that is to not redefine marriage. There's a simple answer for that. And that is, you do what they've done in other countries and in other situations, and it's called civil partnerships, domestic partnerships. It's called civil unions. You give people in irregular relationships like gay marriage, not gay marriage, gay relationships, you give them not gay marriage, but you give them civil unions. And the civil unions include 
all or nearly all of the financial benefits, all of the legal benefits, all of the inheritance rights, all of the other things that people are clamoring to have who want to enter into gay marriage. The only thing it doesn't give them is the name gay marriage. Now, why is that an important distinction? Because marriage cannot be anything other than a man and a woman. Because if, to, if you change the man and woman part, the exclusive man and woman part, you are changing marriage. You are not, it is no longer marriage. It is something else other than marriage. Now, he talks in terms of two people having the right to marry. But my question would be, why two people? Where do you get the number two? What logical uh, authority gives you the number two? Well, from the traditional standard definition of marriage, is very clear. There are two sexes. There is a male. There is a female. Those are two. You get the two person of a marriage from the very fundamental definition of marriage, which is a man and a woman. There are two people in a marriage because there are two sexes. Okay, but if you open up a new definition of marriage, then you open up the, uh, the number of people in a marriage. Why would you limit it to two? Why does Justice Kennedy keep talking about two people joined together? He has no basis for that. If you're going to redefine the fundamental uh, definition of marriage, then why stick with a traditional two? Why not three, four, five, six, seven, whatever? See, this inconsistency is going to destroy the whole concept of marriage. Now, he says in one of the parts of the ruling that um, he needs to, some critics have said they should be more cautious and not jump into something like this because this is only a new phenomenon. It's only been around for a couple decades. And, but he doesn't see that argument. He says, well, we've got a lot of literature. We've got a lot of decisions. Yeah, a lot of decisions in literature within two decades, 20 years. Why not go back further? I mean, 20 years is not a very long time in the, uh, the whole scope of things. And, it, and, and he also points out, he says, um, uh, there are no detri- uh, we haven't seen any detrimental effects of gay marriage. Oh, really? Why don't we look into Northern Europe? Why don't we look into Holland, the Netherlands? Why don't we look up there? What is the state of marriage up there now that they have legalized gay marriage up there? Well, the state of marriage up there is in shambles. Once you start tampering with the basic found fundamental definition of marriage, then, then it all goes down the hill. People don't even bother to get married up there now in Northern Europe. Only a small percentage of the people get married. Why get married? Just shack up. Just live together. Just uh, form uh, relationships and then just break up in relationships. You don't, need, you don't need marriage. That's what happens when you tamper with the definition of marriage that we've inherited from history. If you start redefining it, then it trivializes it. It's no longer unique now. Did you know marriage used to be unique? It was a man and a woman. Now it's not unique. Uh, there's nothing special about a man and a woman joined together uh, for a lifetime. That's, that used to be the definition of marriage. Now that's not unique because now, according to the Supreme Court, it could be two men joined together. It could be two women joined together. Uh, it could be a man and a woman joined together. That's, that's okay, too. Now it, it, it's not unique. It's not special. It's not a sacred or holy thing. Now it's just a common thing, um, a number of one of many different configurations. And we'll see in the future even more configurations, like I said, because why, why stop at two? Two was a number that fit the sexes, male and female, two. But now that you open it up for any configuration, uh, why stop at two? Why not five, six, seven? And so we begin to see the absurdities of this decision already. We just uh, think about it a little bit deeper. And so uh, we begin to look at this decision closer, and we begin to see all kinds of problems with it. One of the things is, one of the arguments, and it, I, I don't really understand why this is an argument, but one of the arguments that they try to make is that 
Um, they need to legalize uh, gay marriage because the children in these relationships, in these so-called families, they suffer because they don't know, you know, how to look at themselves. They don't. Is is are there are there two mommies or are there two daddies really married? Are they in a family? You know, the children have all these questions. And so we as a society need to change our definition of marriage so that these children in these irregular relationships, they're not confused. I have a better solution. Why not talk to the people who are forming these irregular relationships and try to encourage them to explain to their children that they are not following the, uh, the definition of marriage that has been handed down from time immemorial and that that is the source of confusion and not society isn't the problem it's their parents are the problem their parents are trying to go outside the boundaries of moral and ethical principles and it's causing their children some problems why shift the blame to society and tell society it has to change its definition of marriage why not talk in terms of these people who are entering into these irregular uh, arrangements and put the blame where it deserves to be put on them? So they are responsible for their children's confusion, not society. You can't just blame society for your own problem. If you formed an irregular, disordered relationship with another adult and your and you have children that you have somehow gotten. Uh, you couldn't have gotten it biologically, but you got it from some way. Then explain to them the, d the dilemma that you're in and explain to them that it's not society's fault, it's your own fault. So we need to go through here and really raise these questions because it's really uh, crazy as to how the justices can blame the problem uh, that these uh, families so-called are experiencing on society when in fact it's the people who form these relationships it's their problem it's their uh, it's on them and so to try to disrupt all of society to write to, to say we need to redefine the whole definition of marriage so that these people in these irregular relationships these aberrant relationships feel good about themselves or that the children that they have involved with them feel good about themselves. We need to change society as a whole. This is crazy. This is bad social policy, and we need to tell people that it's bad social policy, and we need to uh, continue to press the argument. Even though this is a decision that is handed down from on high, uh, we need to continue to tell people that this is a real mess and it will become even messier in the future as we see the implications of the decision work their way out in society. Well, that's all we have for today, but I'm going to come back next week and talk more about this decision on another episode of Christian Answers. God bless. Mm -hmm.